Hi everyone. Welcome back. Um, this is episode two of making these altar paper clips in case you're just joining us. Um, what I forgot to say in the first video, which I will tell you about now, is that what inspired me to make these was a while ago I saw this picture on Pinterest and this is what I saw. This is the picture. And, um, I mean, I, th I thought, oh, I really love those. I'd like to try and make them. So I followed the link on Pinterest and it led me to the Somerset Studio website. And, uh, it turns out that, um, the issue that this project was featured in is, wasn't an issue I had. So I ordered the back issue, and that is this right here. It is the February, January, February 2017 issue, and it, and this is the one that this project is featured in, um, right here. And that's the picture, but. When I ordered it, they said it was going to take five weeks to get here. So I thought, oh, I don't want to wait that long, you know. So I printed out the photo I had, which was quite blurry and fuzzy. There wasn't, and I couldn't make out any of the writing on the side either, no matter how far, how, you know, um, how much I zoomed in. So I just went by this picture and decided to make them, uh, you know, by looking at the picture and using, you know, some of the supplies I had. So that's the story behind these, and that's where the inspiration came from. So if you have this issue, you won't need to work off a photo like I did. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Now, in this next step, we're going to make this banner that goes across the top. And um, what you'll need is like a medium weight chipboard, something like this. This is a, I can't, I, I have no idea how thick that is, but it's like that. You can see it. And... You'll need it. I, I cut my strips about a little shy of a half an inch. Um, they could even be a, a little bit um, narrower if you only have, um, wait, you only have one little saying to put at the top instead of two lines, then you can make it a little bit narrower if you want. I'm going to put those over here. I have them. Um, you'll need a piece of cheesecloth or a lightweight fabric like muslin or something that's like a light weave like this. This is like almost like a linen. I have no clue where, where and when I got this. It looks like that. I don't know if you can see. And this I tea dyed. And I also tea dyed the or coffee dyed the cheesecloth. And a little gesso, if your chipboard is this color, um, you'll want some um, gesso. Because if you look at the picture, the um, chipboard they use is kind of like, kind of grayish in color. It's not quite this brown color. So you'll need a little bit of gesso and a paintbrush like we used in the first video. Um, you'll need some ink, um, and that's where the gray part comes in. I To make it a little bit grayer and, not, and, and color the gesso a little bit, I used this um, Distress Ink Kickery Smoke. It's got kind of a, a smoky gray tint to it. And you'll need a hole punch, but to punch a hole in this thick chipboard, 
I used my um, We Are Memory Keepers uh, hole punch, heavy duty hole punch. Um, and if you don't have that, I thought the other way you could punch a hole is by using an awl, um, like this one. Or you could use even like a nail and a hammer would make a nice hole for you. Because you don't, you don't need a real big hole. You'll need a corner rounder too to, if you want to make rounded edges on the chipboard piece. And if you don't have a chomper like this one, I'll show you another way you can round the corners and make a nice round corner. Um, you need some fabric glue, um, fabric tack, or some white glue like art glitter or tacky glue. Um, any of those should work. And then you'll need some words. Um, if you want to put words at the top like these. Um, you want to, you can type some out on a on a piece of paper, and you know make the font small enough so it will fit in that you know half inch area. Or for my convenience, I just used the Tim Holtz words. What are they? They this one's called Small Talk, and um, for the ones that were long and didn't fit on. The length I was using, I, I would, uh, I'll show you how I did it, actually, because I picked out a long one, is I just cut it in, in half, or I cut where the words, you know, seemed like they could, you know, split apart and still sounded right. So that's what I used, and that's pretty much it. So. Let's get started. This is the one I'm going to use. This one's called The Journey is the Destination. And I've got my chipboard piece here. I've got a few pre-cut. This is a half an inch by about one and three quarters. It depends on how far over you want it to hang. On your um, on the top of your piece that's all you know according to what what your preference is so this one like I said is about an um, inch and three quarters I think yeah and here's the trick with the using the corner rounder because there's a trick to that because this is so narrow um, your corners will come out a little wonky unless you um, watch where it's falling on that little plastic edge. Not this one, but there's another plastic edge there where this part falls. So you want to punch your first, you know, corner and then go on the other side and do it. If you do that, it'll come out wonky. Let me show you on a test piece. If you just slip it it'll slip it in there. Let's cut the first one. And you slip it in there, it doesn't hit the this little plastic edge there um, properly because it's so narrow. I'll show you what happens. You come out with a corner that looks like that. So, once you punch the first corner, you kind of want to eye it. Look, look and see where your punch is going to fall. And then, like that. See? And now it doesn't have that wonky edge to it. So let me finish punching this, and I'll show you how to do it if you don't have a punch. 
like this one because I think a regular corner rounder won't work um, on a piece of chipboard this thick. So if you don't have one, I found that a popsicle stick just about works pretty well. This one's kind of narrow, but you can still draw around it and get kind of an idea for a corner. Or you can also use another thing I tried was the end of a paper clip. That's another good one. You can kind of draw around your paper clip and but taper your corners a little bit more. And then just draw your corner and then cut it out. Anything with a rounded edge that would fit that width would be would work. This was not coming out all that great, but it's good enough for demonstration purposes. And then just trim it up, and you have your round edge. But at least it gives you a guide for you know rounding that corner there. So I'll do that again. Hold it up right about to the edge, kind of draw around it, kind of taper off that edge that's open, and then cut. Sorry about that, it's my hand. And then if it's, you know, kind of wonky, if you want to even it up, you can just take a sanding block, like this one, and then kind of, I can't do this too much, because it's, ugh. And just, you know, sand around your corner till you get achieve or get what you want. And just, just like that. So... I have my piece, and I could have just taken the white and gone over it with the ink, but I wanted to try the gesso, because I think the gesso gives it a little bit more of a, um, you know, vintage, um, shabby chic kind of feel to it. So, let's get out our gesso. And And cover that. Again, I just start off with a little bit of a dry brush because I don't want too much. I'd rather add more, have to add more than put on too much in the first place. It's like and then you can pounce on it too. It gives it kind of a, um, a more uneven look that way. So there I've got that. And you, well, I also painted around the edges to um, give them more of a, a finished look. Just cover them up with some I hope this dries in time to use the ink because I don't have another one pre made. There. Just that should be enough, I think. Let me put this away. waiting for that to dry I'll go over the fabric part 
because I used two different, actually three. <laughs> and the first one, you'll see, I didn't do this rounded chipboard thing. And on the one of them, I tied knots, but I couldn't do that with the um, cheesecloth. It was too fiddly. So I took a thin strip of this light weave stuff and tied a knot. And then went over the back of it, went across the back of it with the fabric, and then tied another knot. Went through the hole and tied a knot and cut it off. On this one I used, I just poked the cheese hole, cheesecloth through the hole. Okay, and then you'll need a little piece of muslin or, you know, a piece like this fabric to make the loop. There's kind of like a little loop at the top of each one, kind of peeking above the the um, the banner there, and that loop serves as a way to attach this pin, this clip, and this little safety pin. So that is necessary to have. So what I did was get my fabric scissors out. I kind of eyeballed how big I wanted the loop and how much I wanted it to hang below the, um, I cut this off, how much I wanted it to hang below the, um, the banner. It's a little bit too wide. And the one that I th I'm going to make is this one with the pin. So I do want, you know, enough of a width to cover that pin, but not the whole, not all of it, just this part. So I'll make it a little bit narrower. And that should do be good, pretty good because I'm going to fray this edge. And you always want to give yourself a little bit extra for fraying. You just pull the threads out. You know. I'm sure many of you know how to do that. Just to fray it. Make it look grungy, but I can't find the word I'm looking for. Shabby. There you go. So you kind of make your loop. And then hold it up so you get a good idea of how much you want hanging over the top. Put your piece down. And then let's say we want to fold that up about another quarter inch. So let's fold this up a little bit more. And then measure again with your piece. And there I have enough of a, a little bit of loop showing at the top and enough of a loop hanging below the banner to slide in the, the um, safety pin. So I'm going to cut that off so I know. I'm going to set it aside because our banner piece is ready and dry. Put these away so I don't grab them and use them on paper or cardboard. Okay, so now I'm going to ink it a little bit to kind of give it a little gray, more gray color. Just a little light. Again, I always go with light at first because I can always add more. It's always harder to take take away. And just lightly go over that. See how it it colored it just a little bit. 
you want more of an edge, defining edge, then take your ink and go over the edge like that. You're angling the end in. So it, it covers the over the edge a little bit. It's kind of like a straight end. I don't like that straight line there. So to take that away, put my ink away, and get my gesso out, and then just touch it up with my finger. Just a little bit. Take away that edge look there, that straight line, like that. Okay, there we go. I think that's pretty good. Now I punch the holes. So get my punch, and I will usually just put a a mark where I want my holes. And that looks pretty good. I'd say that's about an eighth of an inch from the end. Maybe a little, about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be totally perfect because um, it's got to be covered up with that cheesecloth. So take your small hole on your Cup of dial. And I'm uh, sorry, I'm going to have to hold this up to the light to see it. And punch. Now, see how that came out kind of off center? It really won't show once you put the um, cheesecloth in. So, I'm not too worried about it. And Another hole. That one came out kind of wonky. See how they're wonky? But you'll see, actually, this is good because you don't have to redo a new piece to get them centered. The cheesecloth will cover it up. So you have your piece. And um, the next thing to do is put your words on. So I chose this saying the journey is the destination. And I thought I'll cut it between is and the. So it says the journey is the destination. And snip it off right there. And then I'm going to trim it off a little bit on this end to match up with this end. And my tweezers pick this up. And then I'll trim off a little bit on this end to match up with this end. A little bit more even here. And it's stuck. Take these little pieces away so they're not sticking everywhere. Now, the thing is, is I also, when I did made these other ones, I had to trim off a little bit at the top too for it to look right. Because when you stack them up, you see, kind of goes over. So the words on the bottom. So I trimmed off a little on the top of this one. And I trimmed off. A little on the bottom of the lower line. Like that. And then that should fit pretty well. We're going to glue these on. Yeah, that fits real, that fits well. So the next thing I did, and I didn't mention this since. The supplies. 
was you'll need to take your I distress these with the tea dye and yeah because we're doing we're doing this pink one so I would use tea dye I think I'll use tea dye on that on this one with the botanical I used vintage photo because it it matched up with the color a little bit better and we all know vintage photo pretty well at least most of us do so just go around the edge that one and this one wake my computer up so I can see what I'm doing and then I put it down on the board in here and go over the top part and color that the other piece Sometimes it's really easy to get a heavy hand with the ink. <laughs> Always have to be so careful. That looks good. Okay, let's put that away. Put our sander away. And our popsicle stick can go away. And so can our paper clip. So, alright. So I have my two pieces. And all we need to do is glue them on. I glued on the bottom first. And in this case, I used the art glitter glue, which is a, just, I should shake this up. It seems to be get watery if you don't. take my finger and spread that a little so it doesn't seep out and then center it as you can and this one spread that out I fed Kitty, so he shouldn't come in and use it, but he might. There we go. There. So we got our words on like that. And the next part is to put in that the cheesecloth. Well, in this case, cheesecloth. In the other case, it was the knot. Cheesecloth is just too fiddly to try to tie it in the knot. I took one of these to get it through the hole. Just to get it started through the hole. And pull it through. I left a nice end on it so I, I had enough to play with. And I just ran it across the back and bunched it up a little to get it through the hole. Let's try. Let's see if we can get this one in. Yep. Pull that through. There. See, I have a nice play on each end to work with. And then I just took some glue and fabric tech. Let's see if this 
end up. Oh, sorry. Get that. Now wipe up my computer. All right. Um, just to keep it down. Plus, you don't want too much bulk on the back here because you're going to be gluing it down. So make sure you, your cheesecloth isn't too bulky. And then just trimmed off the ends. To where I liked it. Oh, that looks pretty good. And spray them out a little bit if you want. Get to look kind of natural. All right. It's sticking to my hands. Got glue on my hands. Let me uh get a bit of wet wipe. All right, and I gotta put the pin back in my glue so it doesn't dry up. Just put that one on. Okay, so the next step is to to put your loop on that we just went over, and so I I just put the loop to me in the back so it doesn't show on the top or the bottom part. But you want to leave it open on the bottom so you can get your pin through. So just put a little glue down. Make sure your paper clip's facing the right way. You want to glue it on upside down. And stick one end down. This is kind of fiddly, so, you know, make sure you have your patience in check here. Alright. And then double check again. Make sure your loop isn't too low. You know, want to shorten that up just a little bit. So let me get some glue down. Come on, glue. Come on. There we go. Put a little dab just to get it down. And then flip up your loop. And stick it down. So it becomes out a little crooked. This is like super crooked. straighten it up a little. I think that's good, but I'm going to check again. Yes. That's perfect. So now you can take some more glue. Keeping in mind that this hangs over on the back. So you only want to glue sticking. You only want to glue put glue basically on that loop part, this top part, and then a little across the bottom, the very top of these these corners. So Come on, glue. A little glue here. Just get some glue here. And a little bit across the top there. That should be good. That should hold it on well. And if it doesn't, you can always stick a little bit more on. And you want to center it. 
and check your back to make sure you don't have any big blobs of glue hanging out. And then what I do is I would suggest I get glue off my fingers again. Put a little dab of glue in that hole just so it, you know, holds that cheese clip uh, cloth in the hole. Doesn't fall out. And again, this is kind of fiddly, so just uh, keep your patience in check there. <laughs> All right. And if these don't fall just like you want it, add a little glue and put them where you want them. There you go. And if you want that one up, you can just glue it. Now this kind of shifted a little while I was working on it. And make sure you don't have any glue seeping out. If you do, just rub it off with your fingers or a tool like this. And then what I did to make sure that it stays down I took a clip like this one, this bulldog, I think it's a bulldog clip, and I just clipped it over to hold it in place and let it dry. And that's where we're at for this step or the process. The next thing is the jewelry part, that's what I call it, and that's where I'll go over the charms and what I did with the charms and the chain and I'll go over how I um, attached this clip and I'll go um, over some of the process I used to get the look on the charms and how we put them all together so that's it for today thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and comment. See y'all later. Bye.